Hello, my motor enthusiasts. The pit lane is buzzing with whispers about the future of Christian Horner at Red Bull Racing. Accusations have been leveled at him, and an independent investigator is sniffing around the case. The details are hushed, but rumors suggest inappropriate conduct towards an employee. The outcome, whilst key, doesn't promise immediate verdict on his fate. Our friends at Red Bull are in hurry to wrap this up, wishing to clear the air before the curtains rise on the 2024 season. There's chatter about voluntary resignation, but Horner is firm on the podium, denying all allegations. Bernie Ecclestone, the old Formula One tycoon and Horner ally, has tried to smooth things over, yet Horner stays put. Complications arise with a tense relationship between Horner and Jos Verstappen, Max's dad. Red Bull's image is teetering on the edge, with high stakes if the investigation uncovers any foul play. The FIA's role is yet unclear. This scandal could shake up the team, and even the hint of misdeeds can ripple through Red Bull racing. If the key players see Horner as a liability, this could signal a change in leadership. The sport world is holding its breath, watching Red Bull's response as a litmus test for how Formula One handles internal crises. Adrian Newey, the brilliance behind the team's aerodynamics, once vowed to exit if Horner did, but whispers suggest a change of heart. Red Bull seems set to keep its eye on the finish line, prioritizing stability and performance, even if it means saying goodbye to Horner. Quite the pit stop, wouldn't you say? Hello folks, it's your friendly host Enzo here. And I'm William, at your service. We're your daily pit stop here on F1 Motor Fever Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. It really makes a difference. Now, let's go full throttle. Now, let's add some fuel to our chatter. Did you know that Red Bull Racing, caught up in this storm, started its Formula One journey back in the year of 2005, acquiring the team from Jaguar Racing? In a short span of five years, Red Bull found itself at the top of the game, winning four consecutive Constructors' Championships from 2010 to 2013. Quite impressive. And here's another nugget for our listeners. Christian Horner, the man in the eye of the current storm, was appointed as Red Bull's team principal at the age of 31, making him the youngest principal in Formula One history. How about that? Ha ha ha, yes, quite remarkable. And with the young Max Verstappen, the youngest driver to start a race in Formula One, Red Bull Racing certainly doesn't shy away from youthful talent. It seems they believe in unbridled energy, quite fitting for the brand, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Well, they say fortune favors the bold. As we wait for the Red Bull Racing team to reveal their lineup for the 2024 season, this coming 15th of January, it seems Christian Horner's position as team principal is on the ropes. It's been a week of revelations, with allegations emerging that have cast a long shadow over his tenure. Indeed, it seems that an imminent departure is on the cards for Horner. Red Bull GmbH has confirmed that he'll be interviewed by an independent investigator this Friday, marking his first direct involvement in the ongoing investigation. Quite the twist, isn't it? In fact, the company has interviewed other Red Bull employees in their quest for insight into the allegations against Horner, who at 50 years of age finds himself at the center of a storm. The nature of the allegations remains mysterious, however. Red Bull is keeping their cards close to their chest, and the German tabloid Bild has reported a rather salacious story, but the truth remains to be seen. I've heard that the complaint originates from a team member who had significant professional dealings with Horner. The outcome of Friday's interview is of utmost importance and could change the course of Horner's career at Red Bull Racing. Absolutely. Though I must add, it won't be a swift process. We're talking about an investigation that prioritizes thoroughness and fairness. It will take time to analyze the findings and reach a definitive conclusion. You're right. But there's a pressing need to resolve the matter with the upcoming season presentation. It's been suggested that Horner consider a voluntary resignation, a move that could potentially mitigate the public backlash and preserve some dignity for all parties involved. True, 
but Horner appears to be standing his ground, bolstering his defense with legal representation and publicly denying the allegations. Quite a move he's making, and let's not forget the involvement of Bernie Ecclestone and the strained relationship between Horner and Jos Verstappen, Max Verstappen's father. This situation is shaping up to be a real potboiler. This situation involves more than just Horner. The Red Bull brand is on the line. If the investigation uncovers any wrongdoing, the damage to Red Bull's reputation could be substantial. The Formula One community and Red Bull's global fan base are watching this closely, and there's a lot of doubt over whether Horner will be able to emerge from this unscathed. Yes, Enzo, public perception really plays a crucial role in shaping a team's image and its commercial success. Horner's predicament and the media attention it's getting is already casting a shadow over Red Bull Racing's reputation. This is a brand that values excellence and integrity at its highest levels of management. Absolutely, William. And we must not forget the potential impact on the team's internal dynamics. We've got to consider the relationships between Horner, his colleagues, and the drivers. Allegations of this nature can create an atmosphere of mistrust and unease, potentially undermining team cohesion. And that, Enzo Watts, is something a team like Red Bull Racing can ill afford. They rely on precision, cooperation, and mutual respect to succeed on the track. Any disruption to that balance could adversely affect performance. You're spot on, William. Even if Horner is cleared, the lingering effects of the investigation could hamper his ability to lead. This calls into question his future as team principal. Not to mention the role of key stakeholders, sponsors, partners, influential figures like Helmut Marko and the Verstappen family. They have a significant influence over the team's direction. Surely, it's an intriguing time for the sport. Right. For those just joining us, we've been discussing the unfolding situation with Red Bull Racing's team principal, Christian Horner. An investigation into serious allegations against him is underway, and there are whispers of an imminent departure. His position within the team, the implications for Red Bull's brand reputation, and the potential impact on the team's internal dynamics are all under the microscope. So what are your thoughts on this development? Well, it's quite a situation, isn't it? It's not often we see such drama off the track. The coming days will surely be a test of the team's resilience and leadership. Absolutely, the stakes are high. But there's also the role of key stakeholders to consider. The influence of sponsors, partners, and figures like Helmut Marko and the Verstappen family could sway the direction of events. But let's continue with our discussion, shall we? It's getting rather complex, isn't it? The involvement of Bernie Ecclestone, the apparent support of Marko and Jos Verstappen, and then the shift in Nui's allegiance from Horner to Red Bull as a whole. It's a tangled web. What do you make of all this? It's indeed a complex situation. It seems like the pressure from influential stakeholders could potentially lead to a change at the top, irrespective of the legal conclusions of the investigation. The sport is now more accountable and transparent than ever, and how Red Bull handles this could set a precedent. It really puts the sport's commitment to ethical leadership under the microscope. Indeed, and don't forget the element of Adrian Newey. His role at Red Bull is insurmountable, He's the brains behind the aerodynamic designs that have led to multiple championships. But now, it seems he's detached his future at Red Bull from that of Horner. This signals a readiness within the team to adjust and overcome the challenges posed by Horner's situation. Yes, it really highlights the fluidity of Formula One's behind-the-scenes negotiations and alliances. It's all about the long-term competitiveness and organizational stability even if it means parting ways with its long-serving team principal. It's an unprecedented situation, and it will be interesting to see how it unfolds. Even the possibility of Nui's departure signifies a significant shift in the dynamics of the team. The stakes are high, and all eyes are on Red Bull's next move. This tangled web we've been dissecting isn't the only interesting bit from the world of Formula One. There's a bit of a kerfuffle between Toto Wolff and Lewis Hamilton regarding the misrepresentation of Hamilton's new contract. But that's a topic for another day. There's also a shakeup at Ferrari, isn't there? Oh, indeed. 
The Italian Formula One media reported before Christmas that Carlo Sainz had been offered a one-year extension to his current contract, which runs to the end of this season. However, Sainz seems to have had his sights set on a longer stay in Maranello. Yes, he's reported to have pressed for a two-year extension, rejecting Ferrari's one-year offer. It will be interesting to see how this plays out. It's clear that Sainz wants some certainty about his future, which is understandable. But Ferrari also has to consider their long-term plans and the performance of their cars and drivers. It certainly adds another layer of intrigue, doesn't it? It's a game of chess, with all these pieces moving on the board. We'll have to wait and see how each team strategizes and positions themselves in this fascinating world of Formula One. William, what's the word on the street internet-wise? Right, listen to this. User named Slut for Pringles has posted, quote, the fact that the story first leaked in the Netherlands of all places is probably no coincidence. Behind the scenes in Formula One, there are whispers that the personal relationship between Horner and Jos Verstappen is badly damaged, unquote. Quite a claim made there. Let's dig into the comments. User named Zant Killer responds with, quote, what flipping reality are we in where Bernie is trying to be a voice of reason? Unquote. Hey, a bit of wit there from Zant Killer. Then Bald Barreto replies, quote, truly this was the most bizarre and chilling part of the article. Though given that Bernie introduced Jerry and Christian, I suppose he does have a history of being some kind of benevolent force in their lives, unquote. But here's something interesting from When Lemon's Lemonade, quote, Bernie was always chaotic neutral. He was responsible for organizing the medevac flight that brought Frank Williams back from France after his crash. But he's also a raving apologist for Vladimir Putin, unquote. Ah, a balanced view from When Lemon's Lemonade. Anything else catches the eye? A follow-up comment from DL064, quote, David Richards, no one is Bernie's friend in isolation. You are his friend in his pursuit of things, usually money, unquote. That's a bit harsh, but DL064 seems to have a point. Lastly, here's another zinger from Actual Sympathy 7609, quote, and the translation is even missing that apparently Bernie too advises Horner to voluntarily step back, which Horner refuses. What the heck did Horner do for the man who praises Hitler and defends Putin to advise him to step back, unquote. Well, seems like the discussion is getting quite heated. Regardless, it does provide a unique insight into this whole saga. Well, folks, that brings us to the end of a very lively episode. We've dissected the intrigue surrounding team strategies, delved into the world of contracts, and even glanced at the intriguing world of internet comments. Remember to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to stay in the loop with all things Formula One. Your support goes a long way. Share our podcast with your mates, your family, your social groups, spread the word. If you've enjoyed our ramblings, do drop a comment. Who knows what we'll uncover next? The world of Formula One never stops, and neither do we. Remember, we're on air every day, bringing you the freshest insights and the juiciest gossip. Keep an ear out for us, because as they say, you never know what's just around the corner. Indeed, William. Thank you all for listening to F1 Motor Fever podcast. We truly appreciate your time. Absolutely. Your company on this ride makes it all the more thrilling. Looking forward to the next one. Pedal to the metal, keep your gaze on the road. Our channel's content is pure gold.